Hey guys, my name is Matt. I'm going to show you how to take a simple rendering and the Z depth pass that you produce in your elements to quickly go through and very accurately produce unlimited variations, even a complete total change to the look while keeping the architecture. Let's go. We have our really simple render here. I'm rendering this out at 1536 by 1024. Want to make sure that we have in our render elements our Z depth. I'm Canadian, so I said Z. You should have this as part of a render element in any rendering package. It really doesn't matter. I'm using FStorm. And make sure that you have a good range of grayscale, okay? Save those two render elements and we go into our Photoshop. I should mention that you should save the files in 16-bit format, either a TIFF or PNG. And then all you have to do is go to Auto Contrast. You're going to want to make sure that there's the full grayscale of 100% black and 100% white so that Stable Diffusion recognizes this properly. You can get some errors if you don't uh, if you don't do this step. Next, in my case, I have to invert this because white should be in the foreground, okay? So I just did Control I and then just go ahead and save that and keep it in the 16 bit, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna go over to Stable Diffusion now. In our Stable Diffusion, in this case, I'm using Automatic 1111. You can try out the new Forge UI and of course Comfy if that's your preference. I'm using a SDXL model, currently my favorite for uh, for these scenes, Albedo Base version 21. And I have a simple prompt, photo of a modern interior and cartoon painting rendering 3D as the negative prompts. I have a method for my prompting. I always start simple and I have uh, reasons for that plus a way that I qualify my models that I download from Civit. It's a whole process. It's pretty simple, but uh, if you want me to make a video about my prompting techniques and how I decide which models are right for which project, uh, leave a comment and uh, maybe that'll make a video about that. We come down and I'm using exponential and my sampling steps are 35. Don't forget to click the measurement tool so that this is uh, paired properly to your resolution of your rendering. And we go down to control net and we're gonna say upload independent image. And here's where we drag in our processed render element. We have our depth preprocessor automatically selected, but we don't need that. So we select none because it's already been processed. We have our model depth. I like to use this one, it seems to be fast. On an XL model, this thing can uh, can run in memory, so I like to use the uh, 256. With the map loaded, we can almost crank this to noising to generate something almost completely new up to 0.9, because the exercise here is to generate something that's wildly different, uh, but has some resemblance, because I want to test materials, I want to look at the outside and the mood, and, and just be inspired by some ideas. Now this is really annoying, when this happens. This is coming from a little bit of the noise that's in the rendering. So what I like to do if this happens is to bring the denoising down and create a slightly smoother version uh, for my rendering. You could smooth this out with a denoiser of some kind you have in Photoshop. Um, but one way to do it is just to simply process it in SD and uh, that will give you a similar image that we have already, but it'll be um, it'll be smoothed out a little bit and it'll induce just so this is our new starting point Everything looks similar to the existing rendering So we're gonna move that over and hopefully when we go to turn up the denoise We won't have that same issue now We can turn up the denoising and hopefully if we go up to something like 0.8 We will no longer have those artifacts completely random new inspirational image that looks somewhat close to our original. This is where I would start adding a prompt because I definitely want to have a fireplace. The next thing I might want to do is to say night. Okay, so here we are. Now we're a little bit closer to our rendering with that uh, kind of variation I was looking for, right? It has, it's going to, it's going to give you a lot of random pot lights. There's nothing we can do about that. But here's a little bit of the mood that I might want to be inspired by. It's also putting up some concrete. So if I don't want that, I might put concrete down here as a negative prompt. These are the results I'm looking for. We have a pretty natural looking image. 
It has an accurate fireplace and we have this bowl. And we could now go through our prompts and have a look at different times of day, perhaps. Bright, sunny day. We're going to have to raise our denoising just a little bit. Yeah, it isn't as bright and sunny and different as I hoped, but we do have slight variations in the uh, in the materials. Okay, so if you're not getting the variations that you're looking for, just simply change the main prompt here, which we could type in traditional. And if you really want to have uh, more variety, simply change that, uh, take out the word modern, and you're going to get something completely different. Yeah, here's the first one. You can see you definitely got the bright sunny day in there this time. I took that prompt out, generate again, and I'm going to increase my uh, C of G scale to eight. That means pay attention more to the prompts and not the base image. Okay, I took out the word painting so we could add some artwork to this wall because painting was the style that I was trying to remove, but not that I didn't want artwork on the wall perhaps. And here I have traditional and I put artwork and paintings and yeah, we've got a beautiful classical type room that could be something that you just want to be inspired by some of the artwork perhaps so you just take these and this is all becomes part of a mood board and you then you switch this over to uh, classical here's our classical example let's try postmodern okay so that's not quite what I was expecting but uh, you know cool the chairs are a little too specific I think for maybe this exercise maybe you want to remove them or swap them out for something more generic I think that covers most of what we can do in this image. Of course, you just keep adding prompts and uh, increasing the batch and you can produce an unlimited amount of variations. If you would like to learn more about how to automate it, do further seasons, work on an exterior, most of my videos are on my website, hallett-ai, and we come down and I have a really cool 20 minute video of an exterior scene that I take you through and we do all four seasons and time of day. And then we can basically walk away from this. This is a great exercise to really inspire you into how to uh, further your rendering from something really simple and basic. And that's on hallett-ai.com. My regular job is actually, an, I'm an architectural renderer. So if you want to check out my portfolio, links down below. Uh, this is the kind of work I do normally. I've brought in AI now into it and uh, love it so much. I'm passing it on into the YouTube world. See if you guys uh, find this useful. Let me know in the comments what I should do next. And uh, yeah, thank you.